All right, so I guess the first question is, is uh, do you yourself believe in aliens, and do you believe that at any time has that ever intersected with human beings? Well, I had some experience as, as a child of being visited um, by some kind of a, like a praying mantis-like being couple of them. They were, I remember seeing them in my closet, at my front door, my bedroom. And so, and then you grow old and learn about aliens and abductions and watch all the movies and then you think that they're aliens, maybe. But in my line of work, I've done a lot of research into this and I think that the universe is infinite, to quote Lost in Godwin, and and if something is infinite, then there's infinite possibilities of, of life. And, and I think that life is a lot more prevalent in the universe than we think. Now, however, if you gained such a technology where you could move along, uh, jumping around in space over long distances, at that point you wouldn't need to be abducting people or something like that. So I do believe that there is life, a lot of life in the universe. I don't think it has a lot to do with the alien abduction phenomenon. I think that that's something else more, far, no, far more nefarious. Alright, so uh, another question for you is, um, um, you have all these shows, Hollywood, etc., and you have the news media starting to push more to get the idea friendly of actual extraterrestrial sentient uh, ETs that are, you know, interacting with us. Um, do you think that that has anything to do with the phase of the planet that we're going in um, as kind of a control mechanism to control the way people are thinking so they're not um, thinking about prepping um, for the future for their children, for their grandchildren in a new earth that they would have, you know, like totally new situations that we haven't dealt with in modern times? And what's the question? <laughs> um, it, do you think that that's why... There's so much of this push to kind of discredit, I guess, uh, the places associated with it. Like, uh, you got ancient aliens, and so they would have every petroglyph and every single uh, human made edifice of anything having to do with some kind of extraterrestrials in our past. Um, do, do you think that's why they're pushing that so that people won't know that ancient man had control of the uh, earth? Okay. Basically. I, I understand here, and that I don't believe exactly what you said. Let me say it in a different way that there are anti-Diluvian civilizations that were far more advanced than anyone is being taught. I mean, that is categorically 100% what is going on here. And so the event that destroyed it, the Younger Dryas event, 12,800 years to 11.5, is a long event. A lot of things happened on that. Sea levels came up 400 feet. And, I mean, based on the way we live now, we would know that all the coastal cities would be under 400 feet of water, which is just conveniently, Ransom, where you can't scuba dive and do any investigation. It's too deep to scuba dive. Um, it's, you know, they, so how are you going to do the excavations down there? And then it's all covered in huge amounts of sediment since for thousands of years on the coastal plain. So think about it that way. But we definitely know these megalithic structures, there were probably multiple cultures, I think, of advanced civilizations prior to the Younger Dryas event. Now, we know about these magnetic reversals, we, uh, maybe solar micronovas that are driving this. It's a clock cycle that's like tick-tock. Many refer to it as the procession of the equinoxes or the yugas. There are flexure points in that uh, 26,000 year yuga cycle. Every half cycle, around 13,000, and every 6,500, there's a catastrophe. Um, so, that being said, we continue to erase the, the, all the evidence of these cultures again and again and again. And the cultures that re-inhabit the sites um, often get attributed to having created it. You know, like so. Like the megalithic sites where the am in the Amazon. Okay. Um, yeah, and so I guess uh, the, the, main, the main trip I'm having is we're probably going into... Um, this new cycle where everything's going to be thrown off and, and you can kind of tell that the governments of the world know that and they're throwing everything they can at everyone to get used to a new type of uh, civilization that doesn't involve human beings taking care of themselves whatsoever um, and so they, they, they're pushing this uh, alien thing 
and they blame all of these sites, like you're saying, sometimes they do the civilizations, but like you have History Channel that pushes more of an ancient alien things than maybe the ancient man thing, and now we're going probably into the cycle where we're going to see some of the stuff, possibly even in our lifetime, maybe not ours or our children's or our grandchildren's, where we're going to be seeing all of these creatures, alleged creatures on the rocks, on the depictions, that, uh, and with your work you've pointed out and many others that most of these match exactly uh, like plasma and magnetic fields and things that these people would be seeing in the sky. Um, do you think that that's kind of why they're pushing this narrative so that when these things do happen, they've already set the groundwork to a, a, a new belief system of what it is and what's happening? Well, I, I'm pretty sure it's all disinformation. That's why the CIA was set up in the 1940s, why NASA was set up for disinformation. So, and, and the purpose of it is that, is, and they propagandize all the mainstream media, which is now controlled by these, by the people that are in, in charge of disinformation. So think about that. The disinformation campaign started in the 1940s, before there was like real mainstream media. And so the mainstream media that we have today has been, is built around a disinformation campaign of propaganda, which is now legal because of the smith munt Modernization Act that happened back in 2016. So it's, it's literally legal to propagandize news to control the population. So it's part of that. Um, it's a control mechanism. I mean, could you imagine if you told the whole population that we're in, in the next few decades, modern civilization may collapse because it ha has in a cycle time immemorial? Would people go to work? Would they, <laughs> I mean, what would they do? It's definitely something that's talk, talked about at the highest levels, like the Bilderbergs and higher, about these scenarios. So it's just more disinformation and propaganda. And we're going to see more and more of this, these types of psyops as it gets more complicated to cover up the truth. Like with all the freezing and infrastructure failures of the freezing cold in Texas that is a repeat of exactly what happened in 1899 during the centennial minimum. It's a repeat. And they knew, everyone knows in Texas, you know, the people that install billions of dollars of infrastructure, they look at the climatology. They know it got minus, it's been minus 30 in Texas for a week. So they know this, but they do the opposite. It's it, we live in a an opposite world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess the uh, final little ramble or question, because <laughs> I know my questions are long. Um, do you think this this uh, kind of uh, whole new movement throughout society, besides just media, it, it's really popular. The whole concept that maybe extraterrestrials created man in the first place. Um, is it possible you think that they do that also in a, a same kind of disinformation way so that people no longer look into the uh, secret knowledge that's hidden in all of the religions? Because, um, you know, a lot of people notice that there's lots of math and ancient stories told in there that aren't necessarily a, a religious tale. It's more of a, a way to convey uh, sacred information between people that know what they're reading. Um, do you think that's kind of... A, a thing to, to put into culture so that people stop studying the old writings and all of that so that all of the hidden knowledge that's right in her face, if you know what you're looking at, is not looked at or taken seriously anymore. Yeah, with the corporatocracy that is the civilization we're living, we're controlled by corporations. Corporations want to control everything you do and buy to drive the money cycle. So the more information and the less freedom you have, the more mo the easier it is for, for them to make money. The mystery schools and all the ancient knowledge that uh, was destroyed and hidden due to the burning of uh, all the libraries, starting with, you know, not starting with Alexandria, but that's just a good example of ancient libraries of ancient knowledge being lost. This information has probably been passed down in secret societies. So in order to control the population, um, because what happens in a empire reset scenario, like a, a, a major catastrophe, let's say if a younger Dryas event occurred again, there would be no way to control the population. And if no one knew what was actually going on, if you were to reemerge, let's say, from a cave and find whoever made it hundreds of years later on the surface, they would be back into really primitive, they would be very primitive groups of people. You would appear to be godlike to them just like happened in la the last cycle. And you would have two options there. You could either teach them about, uh, you know, building and uh, humanity and, and survival and maybe uh, community settings and stuff like that. 
Or you could teach them about war, right, and destruction, or you could manipulate them as slaves. So I think that what's going on now is that the higher-ups know that things are start, going to start to get bad, and it's like a pullback. And by pitting the public against itself, the whole left-right ideal, um, will allow us to self-immolate as a society. They don't have to do anything to go save themselves and pull themselves back away. We'll, we'll do all the work for them. So that's, the sad, that's the sad part. <laughs> awesome. So I guess a serious question on aliens, though. Um, if there was such an encounter that ever happened between humans, and um, what, what do you think that that would actually look like? And do you think even man would recognize it because of it being so alien and different? Um, what would be the odds on it being any kind of something that we could recognize and, uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, empathize with as a creature uh, on that type? Do you think it would be something so much so that we wouldn't understand what we were even coming across? Yeah, because if you get to that next type civilization that has the ability to, you know, capture the energy of entire solar systems or galaxies, they would probably have, uh, you know, like the Borg, like we see, they would have assimilated in some type of a supercomputer type situation in order to do the necessary, you know, infinite number of calculations it would take to move around the universe quickly or whatever they're doing. If you're at that stage, I don't think I think they would have no, there would be no purpose in interacting with a lower form. There would it would serve no purpose to them, and maybe it's like forbidden because th th there's really no purpose ex unless it was nefarious. But if you're that advanced, there would be no reason you would and you could move around the entire universe, you know, or s that you would yeah. need like fuel or gold or like all those stories are completely ludicrous or ridiculous. Because they're probably personified stories of things that ha actually happened on Earth. I think that there was a, an advanced race of humanoids here hundreds of thousands of years ago that enslaved millions of people to make gold. And maybe they were the Anunnaki. But they're from here. They're not aliens. They were certainly alien to all the other hominids on the planet, right? If you're living in a dirt hut and, you know, sucking on bone marrow, and then this guy comes up with glistening stuff and all these things on... He's an astronaut, right? Or he's a god, or <laughs> yeah. who knows what he is. Right? He has a cell phone. Bloop. Can you imagine if we went back a few thousand years with the stuff we have now? They would think we were from space. Yeah. Do you think there's actually a uh, danger of our own civilization going in that direction with the... They're pushing the idea of, like, Neuralink and all of these other things as a way to... Actually, like Elon Musk says, that, that that's the way to stay away from control of an AI. Is to become AI. Yeah, it's literally to jack in and you have, have a faster connection. In, right, you have to be the top, the top cyborg. You, well, that's all great and good, but in the times we're going, any if you logically look at the science of what happens during magnetic reversals, which we're living, um, increased cosmic radiation, all... Satellites, electrical grid, computers will be useless. There will be no way they can operate in, in that environment, let alone humans operating when the sun comes up or during the day. So, I and, and it's that type of scenario. It's it's gonna won't happen for maybe another decade or so, and that's enough time that this we can integrate the cyborg freakiness and transhumanists by that time. So, but I think all those people will be put out of commission once. Yeah, <laughs> a giant solar flare comes, um, like an X thirty five, and all the cyborgs' heads explode and light <laughs> on fire. That would be an interesting world to live in. Yeah, uh, it's, and we're headed towards there. You're it, living it. Yeah. Do you think that that the reason they're actually doing that is to tap into our uh, processing power, and we're moving into a field of like uh, ancients talked about possibly manipulating DNA and and that might be where everybody comes up with these alien concepts that they actually had the knowledge of how genetics works and to tamper with it and we're coming into that same age where do you think it's possible that they're actually trying to use human beings um, to not only store data and the massive amounts of data you can put in into DNA that would come out the other end of any grand solar minimum event or anything it's their way of pre-programming us to keep control uh, of what we turn into, basically. Yeah, I, I sure hope not. But I think that natural selection and the and the human spirit will keep humans alive for some time to come. We've been on Earth for over a million years, Homo sapiens, and the date keeps getting pushed back further. Um, 
And just think about the the art in the caves in, in Europe from 40,000 plus years ago, or the carvings like the Lion Man that's dated to that around that same time. We've had advanced societies here that were wiped off the planet, and people aren't willing to deal with that, because humans are a species with amnesia. That's from Velikovsky's perspective, not Graham Hancock. A lot of people quote him as saying that, but he just took it from Velikovsky. Uh, we are suffering from amnesia and the fact that humanity gets obliterated on a regular basis. Now, ancient cultures have weaved this into the architecture. Um, Hamlet's Mill did a great expose on this decades ago, where they uncovered the processional cycle hidden in almost all megalithic and ancient structures. In, up, up to the modern time, so even a few hundred years ago, whoever those masons were, were encoding that secret information into buildings. And I believe it's a warning for us. <laughs> And if you, and we were talking about this, the original science is astrology, and there's a lot to it. And it's a way to determine when this cosmic cycle happens and, and when bad things happen or good things happen. And so I don't know why they're hiding the information from us all, because it, ultimately there would be no control, right? If everyone knew they were godlike and had the power to create their own future by manifesting it in their head and believing in whatever they wanted to be you could do that there, no one would have we, we're living in a different evil type of empire model right now and that has to fail before we can start again and this happens again and again and again so it's nothing new but to be alive during the time of the reset that's pretty exciting <laughs>
By their names I am for thee. Free me from darkness and fill me with light. Boom! I'm done. Archon's gone. Nanu 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 shapeshifters will not assimilate me. Bingo. That's it. There you go. That's the Archon vibration right there. Mix it up. Add some good beats to it. Shapeshift it a little bit. Tweak it. Have your fun. Just label it. Archon Eliminator. You will not assimilate me. Abracadabra. Boom! There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Emerald Tablet of Magic. That was good. I like it. That was some good. Good beats, good beats, good wave, wave of vibration. vibration. Good beats, good beats, good wave, wave of vibration. Archon Eliminator.
the age-old battle, darkness and light. Out there shall flash from the darkness, the light. And you're all amazing. Just so you know. And I know you guys know. In the future, we will do more of these mind-encapsulating, thought-provoking, incredible presentations. Be the change you want to see. Nanny, 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 nanny